Now, I don't know if you remember this. It's from video 2399. And what it is, is a mechanism that will take a variable linear motion and turn it into a consistent one-way rotary motion. So if I push this a little bit, we get a little turn. If I push it a lot, we get lots of turn, but the turn is always in the same direction. And this can wobble about, meaning that there's a degree of variability as well in the direction that force is actually applied. Now, that might seem a little obscure, but actually it has a hundred uses. I mean, wave power would be one example. Different kind of wind power where you're blowing something backwards and forwards would be another example of where it can be used. So, for me, it's a very useful mechanism. We used it actually in video 2400 where we constructed this, which is a, a, a CVT. We made a CVT out of that mechanism. So that ability to do that is uh, really very useful. And consequently, I'm on the lookout for things that will do that. Things that will take a variable input that's backwards and forwards and turn it into a consistent turning output to run something, say, like a generator. And this is one of the things that has great possibilities for doing exactly that job. Now, I do wonder if engineers think before they name things, because this is called a floating rack. And I can imagine the number of entendres and innuendos you're going to get when somebody says, oh, nice rack rub. But what it does is, if you push it in that direction, it folds about the way. If you push it in that direction, it folds back down automatically and locks in place. So that's dependent on the direction of motion. If we're pushing it that way, it won't push. If we push it that way, it will push. So I was thinking, could we turn that into a mechanism like the one I've just showed you? Of course, what we need to do then is design it. Right, I'm in FreeCAD, and just to warn you, this is not going to be a FreeCAD tutorial. I just want to show you something that FreeCAD has that makes the life of a designer incredibly straightforward, and it's one of their workbenches. If you go to Tools and Add-on Manager, it'll pull up the workbenches available for you, and there they are. And the one we're looking for is called the Gears Workbench. So you click in the search bar and type in Gear, and it'll pull up this. Click on it, install it, you'll have to restart it, and you'll get the Gears Workbench. Once we've got the workbench, it's accessible like any workbench in this pull-down menu here, and there it is, gear. Click on that. If you click on that, this is what you'll get. And what you've got is a starter pack for a whole bunch of gears. If you just look at this here, you'll see that there's a whole lot of gear symbols, including what we're looking for, where we've got an involute rack, and we're going to need that. We've got the involute gear, the straightforward gear, which we're going to need. There's the ring gear there. There's bevel gears. There's worm gears. There's even some really weird ones. This timing gear would be great for things like bicycle chains. Here we've got a lantern gear. Here we've got a hypercycloid gear. Now, they're an utter pain to design. You have to go right back to the mathematics. But here, all you have to do is click it. Once you click it, it will create the cycloid gear for you. There it is, right there. And if we click on that, we get the parameters of the cycloid that we can change. Things like the disc heights, whether there are center pins, how big the eccentricity is, how many um, little loops there are. There's absolutely everything in there to make designing something like a hypercycloid gear, well, a piece of cake. And the things we're interested in here because of the floating rack, of course, is the involute rack. So let's pull one of those up. Click on that. Let's just hide that. There we go. Click on that. And we have an involute rack. And if we're on the involute rack, again, we can see all of the things that we need to change. I'm currently in Imperial, incidentally. If I want to change that, then I click on there, down there, and I can change that to something like standard four millimeters, in which case everything in here will change to millimeters. There you go, we've got it there. And the kind of information that we need to change, like number of teeth, for instance, right there. Module, module is the relationship of the number of teeth to the pitch angle. So modules always have to match. If you have a, a normal spur gear, an involute gear with module two, we need to change that to module two in order for them to mesh with each other. But what's important here is we've got a rack gear immediately 
And we could get that any any of these gears immediately where we change a few parameters. I just thought that was awesome. Now, the reason I'm not going to do much of a, of a um, tutorial on it is because it's so straightforward. And all you really have to do is play around with these things, focusing on teeth and module size, and you'll be able to create really stupidly easy gears that you might want. Now, let's take that and create our floating rack. And here are the parts. And clearly, I've made two of them because I'm going to need two. Now, this really was pretty easy to do, and so give it a go. But I will put these on Thingiverse, should anybody be interested. But if you give it a go, you're probably going to do a much better job than I did. But you'll notice that they have a couple of bevels. That bevel faces that way. And on this one, the bevel faces that way. Then we've got these pin plates, and the lever arms just slot onto the pin plates like that so that they're free to wobble backwards and forwards. Then we press the pin plate into the rack first. We do exactly the same with the second pin plate, and that gets pressed into that bar there. And what we end up with is two of them, and we need to join those together. We join those together with these two U-shaped bars. They basically just glue on there and glue on there, so it's facing like that, and the other bar goes the same, but at the bottom. So that it looks like that. Now, when you fix them, just make sure you fix them so they move in opposite directions. So that one folds up that way, like that. And this one folds up in the opposite direction, like that. Then the whole thing just drops in this backing case, like that. So you'll also have a gear and an axle, and you just drive the axle through the gear so it sticks about three millimeters out. And there is one other thing that I forgot. On this bar, there's a hole. In that hole, you put a spring. Now, I used a spring from a pen. I guess you could use any other spring if you want to resize it, or maybe even print a 3D printed spring. So the gear slots in there in the center, and the final thing is, there's a cover plate that goes on the top like that. Right, I've put a dot on it so we can see it work, and all we really do is pull it backwards and forwards. <laughs> As you can see, that dot moves in only one direction. That's awesome. <laughs> it's brilliant, eh? Now, that's a functional model. So if you like, it's another arrow for your bow when you're looking for solutions. And I can think of things to do with this. But as I say, it's a functional model. And I'm sure improvements can be made on it. Now, discovering free CAD gears workbench made this relatively a breeze to design and come up with and so to modify and change for your own purposes you really should be looking at that if you if you've got free cad and you've not looked at the gears workbench then boy you're missing out if you're a bit afraid of free cad then you know jump in there it doesn't take actually that much learning to be honest it's like everything have a look at some of the earlier videos i've done on this if you're using a different program, then, you know, these kind of gear workshops, uh, workbenches are available in other programs. I just thought it was awesome to discover it in FreeCAD, and I thought that was an awesome mechanism that I'd be great to share with you. As I said, it will be on Thingiverse should you want to print it out and play with it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.